Well hello everybody and welcome back to another film, another office based film I'm afraid this week. Um, I think I'm going to change the title of my channel to The Grounded Photographer. I think that's pretty apt at the moment, I've just not been able to get out for weeks. That's about to change as of this weekend I'm getting out with a camera and starting to make new films again so watch out for those. So this one is another tutorial based, it's like the last two that I've done and it's in response to questions that I've had over the last 12 months really about um, one particular treatment that I give me images and that's how I put the, the white borders around the images. Now I like to do that in the films because it gives you a good idea of how um, the images will look when they're printed up and when they're mounted and it's nice to show that along with the full frame images that I often show as well. Um, appreciate that some of you are far more advanced in your Photoshop use and, and this sort of thing is um, pretty low down on your radar but for those of you that that are just getting started and there's plenty of you out there I hope that you um, find this useful so the first um, way that I'm going to show you is the one that I always use uh, I don't use any other way these days the second one is a way that I used to use it so it's got that little bit of an extra step and you might find it useful as well so I'll show you two methods and I'll start with the the usual one so we'll jump straight into Photoshop now so this is an image that I took probably a couple of years ago now and I will put a link above to the video where you can go and watch that uh, that image being taken. Um, currently the image size is, I've reduced it already, it's 1920 by 1280. 1920 is typically your standard TV size, so you'll hear quoted 1920 by 1080p. Um, so that's the size that would, would normally fill a TV, so this is a little bit too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce that to 1500 just to give me a starting point now what I'm trying to create here with that mount is the the illusion that this is a cardboard mount and with a cardboard mount when they cut the aperture out you get a beveled edge like a 45 degree angle where the, where the blade cuts into the cardboard so I want to try and recreate that so what I need to do is I go to image and image size and uh, sorry take that back I need to go image and canvas size not image size canvas size leave that on pixels and change that to I'm gonna try eight now you can play around with different sizes here because uh, obviously more pixels creates a deeper cut so I'm gonna leave that at eight pixels now I need to change the color to something that that resembles or creates the illusion of a, of a cut edge so rather than white because we don't want it to look the same color as the mount I'm gonna pick a gray color and click OK and then OK so you can see just by the edge there that we've got um, you see we've, we've created there that nice grey border and if I go to uh, 100% you can just about see it there now I could go a little bit more and perhaps let's go for another I don't know three pixels just make it a bit deeper and that's probably more acceptable and you can already see around the edge of the image um, if this was the white mount the, the actual um, background of, of Photoshop here it looks like it's already mounted but of course when I take that into into something else like I, I don't know, let's say for example you want to use it on a website it would just be an image with that grey beveled edge and nothing else so in fact I can illustrate that by just cycling through this here um, go to full screen and then zoom out so you can see that it is literally just got the beveled edge around it and nothing else at the moment so 100% again so I need to put that white um, edge around just to finish it off so I will go to canvas size again and this time I want the white so here you can drop this down you can select um, three options here now I could have picked grey before but for me it's too dark if you see there it's too dark for that beveled edge which is why I chose my own colour so I want white now for the card mount. Now, oddly, I've got in a routine of not using pixels for the for the outer mount. I find it easier to work in inches. So I would say that, I don't know, so let's say 1.3 inches as a guess. Like I say, it's, it's all specific to you how you want it to look. So that's put the edge round now. And if I just cycle through to that again, you can see there that um, we've now got that mount round as we wanted and I think that is perfectly sized for me more than happy with that and that really in a nutshell is how the whole thing is done really simple and easy process 
uh, let's just get that back to the right size so there we go that's the starting starting image and and the whole process from from the beginning right to the end very very straightforward so here we have the second shot this one one of my all-time favorites probably one of the best images that i took of this particular year i like this image so much i've actually got it printed up in the home really really quite chuffed with this image when i got it um, as i've said this is going to be slightly different this time um, i'm going to bring it onto a mount board and just do a couple of extra different things with it just take it that little step further so the image is currently sized to um, if I just go to image and image size so you can see it it's 1500 along the longest edge so just press cancel so I need to create a new uh, board so I'll go to file a new I'm going to pick that one there 1920 by 1280 make sure the orientation is on portrait and just click create I need to get the image now from there onto the artboard and the way I do that is pressing command A to select or control A on a PC um, command uh, C to copy or control C on a PC go to the artboard and then command V just ignore that or control V on a PC and that will copy it onto your artboard so on the layers palette on the right hand side you can see that the image is a separate layer on top of the background and we've got a big border at the top and a big border at the bottom which I'm not particularly um, keen on so I want to size the image and, and frame it nicely within within the background so I will go to edit and transform and scale get hold of a corner of the image and just bring it in and move it around to where I, I'm comfortable with it sitting at the top part of the artboard which I quite like there now Photoshop has got snap to guides turned on which is the pink line that you see which tells me when the image is centralized it's only putting one line on a vertical line because I'm not in the middle of the artboard if I move it down you can see the guides come in there telling me I'm central but what I want to do here is I want to put it off center because what I'm trying to create here is the the illusion of um, of a vertical a, sorry a portrait print with a title and a signature on the bottom I'm not going to put that on today but just to show you the mounting process double click that now and what I want to do is I want to remove some of this mount board at the bottom this this extra area that we've got so if I go to the crop tool which puts these guides on and I can drag this up and just leave a bigger space at the bottom than I've got at the top just double click that and it just reduces the size now I'm much happier with that now and if I just press through cycle through and put it on full screen you can see that we've got a nice mount board around the image so we need to get the bevel on now so I press escape go back to the main page and if I go to layer layer style and stroke Photoshop automatically puts a black mount around it which I don't want so I need to change the color by pressing the color itself and this opens the color picker and I can just pick um, a tone that I like and I'm going to go for that and this here rather than actually physically typing the pixels in you can you can actually pull the slider to wherever you want it now one point to note here is that you almost oh, sorry always have to have where it says inside the don't go for any of the other positions you always want inside if you put outside it will put a rounded edge on the mount board and you don't want that because it doesn't look real so it's always got to be on the inside I am just going to reduce that to 8 because I think it'll look better at 8 and just get rid of the crop tool so I'm happy with that um, and that ordinarily would suffice but I want to take it that little bit step further and sometimes it's nice to put a, a drop shadow I particularly um, I used to like it I don't like it quite so much but some of you might want to play around with it and it's all done through the same setting um, by layer layer style and you've got drop shadow and Photoshop will automatically do it for you and there you've got a shadow in here you've got lots of options opacity just to make it more natural and you really want to dial it down um, to uh, to make it look more natural so it's floating off the background now I have to say here we've put the um, the bevel on sorry the um, the uh, 
the cut around the edges that you will get on the mountain board and it does look a little bit unnatural so just to show you and illustrate the shadow um, is the main purpose here so you can just adjust the shadow so you can have it downwards um, basically move it all, all around any way you want and this angle here just change the angle of it as well and uh, very very easy and simple to manipulate now if I go to um, the layers palette here on the right hand side I can actually turn that stroke off and have it back on depending on what you actually want or what you prefer and you can really can just play around it and I think in this instance with the drop shadow on it actually looks better without the bevel so that is basically it I hope the people that asked for this content have found it useful and uh, quite easy to get to grips with Certainly those of you that have got more experience with Photoshop, if you know some different methods or some tweaks, absolutely leave them in the comments below for other people to read. So if you have liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for that regular content. Now, the next video that comes out will be a review video and as I've explained in previous videos, that the review stuff is going to be in addition to the regular content, not in place of it. So. The next time you see me after that, I will be absolutely out and about and I may well just have a little surprise in store as well. So keep your eye out for that video. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. So thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in a little while. Um, so until then, bye for now.